All right, welcome on in everybody. It's your boy, Dude Sweet, AKA Calm Little Buddy. And this is gonna be my final attempt to do a live one take all the way through minimal editing explanation of the Greek letter spells, the most basic explanation of the Greek letter spells. And then another video we'll do will be for the, the divide by spells. I've had a few people comment that they haven't seen a video that just basically takes the Greek letter spells and just explains them very basically. Just shows exactly kind of what they do. None of the site complex, like, let oh, build this huge one, do this, do this, add this, add this. Just the most simple. And I am not representing myself as the greatest expert in the world. So for those of you that want to come at me in the comments and say, well, you forgot about this. Well, you didn't do this. You didn't show that. Well, hey, you know what? I'm not one of the people who knows, you know? So I am just a humble servant trying to provide a tiny bit of information. So we're giving you a tiny bit of information about the Greek spells. All right. First of all, you can unlock the Greek spells by killing the alchemist. I have a video on how to do that. And you can look that up as well. One of the ways that you can become adept with using the Greek spells is to practice. How do we practice? You can use spell labs. If you go to Steam, you go to the workshop and you search for spell labs and you subscribe to it. Then when you start Noita, click it on, restart game with uh, mods active. And then you have this little guy up in the corner here. So there's a whole bunch of stuff, but the, the important things that you kind of need would be enable no death. Basically, we don't want to die because we're going to be testing a few things out. We have a wand spawner and we'll do that in a second. And we have our, our spell picker, which has all the different types of spells, including the Greek spells. I've already gone ahead and picked up some spells. We just need some wands. I wanted to show you the wand spawner very briefly. Uh, we can I'm going to turn. Cast to lane everything way down. I'm going to turn mana way up just so that we can um, we can demonstrate. You, you can use these with wands that are not obviously like these super crazy wands. They will work with almost anything. Let's spawn four of these. What's that? One, two, three, four. All right. Now we have some wands. I have all the Greek letter spells. Just to go over them very briefly with you, we have Alpha. Copies the first spell in uh, your wand. We have Gamma. Copies the last spell in your wand. We have Tau. Copies, uh, captures, uh, sorry, captures, casts the next two spells in your wand. And then we have Phi, which casts a copy of every projectile type spell in the current wand. Now the language on these is very specific casts a copy of the first spell it does not cast the first spell itself here's the difference if you have a spell that casts the first spell such as uh the cast two times or the double spells or whatever you're actually just going to be casting the spell itself and it will waste the charges Propped up charges so the difference is if you have one of the Greek letter spells, it will cast a copy of this. So that doesn't have to have charges in it. Hooray. So now we have unlimited black hole or any other charge based spell. Unlimited. Now notice this specifically says copy of the first spell in your wand. Switch these around. It doesn't work. Why? The Greek letter spells are in fact spells. So this needs to be the first one here. No exceptions. No nothing. Now, cop, uh, cast a copy of the last spell. It would obviously need to be the last spell in your wand. If you had all spells in here, then you would still need to make that the last spell in your wand. Interesting point about this. Let me just very briefly go grab something here. Grab a wand refresh. Something that's important to note. Even if this comes after wand refresh, we all love wand refresh because we could use it to kind of stop a wand, right? We put a bunch of spells in here, and then as soon as we put wand refresh, nothing after here will cast, right? Wrong. So basically, what this is going to do, let's put a bunch of these in here. 
what this is going to do this is going to cast a copy of the last spell in your wand regardless of wand refresh this is still the last spell if we put it here it would not be the last spell because then the nuke would be the last spell right this is not the last spell this is the last spell speaking of which gonna be playing the last spell a little later on this week on our channel at twitch.tv forward slash calm little buddy if you want to check it out last spell is a great game anyway don't believe me just watch see wand refresh stops all of these from casting but your gamma is still going to reference the last spell in your wand that's important to know especially when you get into these larger spells that will cast a whole bunch of different things all right let me just do this real quick all right so now oops what they're doing here actually i'll put this here too let me just get rid of all the charges on this boom Okay, so the Tau. Tau is extremely useful because a lot of spells have some synergies that you may or may not know about. For instance, neither of these have charges. But let's say you were just shooting off your heal bolt, right? Healing bolt. It goes away. Bye bye Can't get it. But very simply, just add a black hole here. Now you can heal yourself with the black hole. What happens is it throws the heal bolt. The heal bolt shoots out ahead of the black hole because the black hole is slower. But then the black hole pulls it back and it throws it back at you. Great way to heal. Another spell that works well with healing bolt and tau essentially is. Let's see, I, I thought I had a copy of teleport, but I guess I don't. All right. Teleport. Check it out. Oftentimes you will catch up to that heal bolt with your teleport and it will heal you. So Tau can be very useful. Cast the next two spells. Tau can be used in conjunction with other Greek spells. So if you wanted to cast two Greek spells, you could use Tau. Now one thing so far about these is you can notice that the cost of these, some of these are very dramatic. 30 is not so bad considering you're using it to, you know, cast an everlasting supply of spells that have charges. Again, 30, not so bad. Tau is 80, which is a little bit of a markup. Now, if you look at this, this is free to cast two spells. So why wouldn't we use this? Well, because this only casts the teleport. Notice, this has no charges, it won't cast. That's why Tau can be uh, your way around that. I mean, your other way around that is just use this with charges, and when it runs out, say, oh, well, I ran out. But I don't think that'll be very much fun. All right, so any projectile-type spell. Is that a projectile? I don't know. 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 What about this? Anyone have a guess? Static projectile. It says static projectile, right? Do static projectiles count as projectiles? All right. 50-50 chance, right? Oh. It did not cast Circle of Vigor, and it did not cast Giga Black Hole, because those are static projectiles. We have a spell for that. Uh, I'm actually going to take this out, because I don't want that going off right yet. Uh, where is it here? Cast uh, every static projectile. All right, so in this case... Oh, it still cast uh, the teleport bolt. Weird. Uh, but it did not. <laughs> it did not cast any other ones. Maybe that's just because the wand is so fast. It's casting this than this. It could be. Uh, we could. We could. We could pull that out there. Do that. Yeah. There we go. All right. So now you see it does not cast our two projectile spells. It only cast the static projectile. All of this makes. Pretty good sense so far, right? But here's something that I bet you didn't know. No, you probably did know. We have Moo, which casts the modifier. Every modifier type in a spell. So let's do this. Let's put a couple modifiers 
in here, and I want to show you something. Uh, take this out. Projectile, projectile, projectile. All right. Actually, we don't want the we don't want the teleport. We'll take that out. Yeah, that's good. Uh, we could use. Let's go get a couple more bolts over here, just for fun. Do I have bolts? I do. Spark bolt. Should be another spark bolt here. There it is. Okay. Spark bolt. Spark bolt. Okay. So Moo says it's going to cast every modifier type. So what if we have a couple of different modifiers? We have Upward Larpa. We have Swipple Bopple here. Uh, Spiral Arc. That will apply those to this. So every... Yeah, see how it uh, applies all of our modifiers? Well, doesn't really get a chance to do upwards LARPA, I guess. But here's the thing. is, is It's only going to apply it to the next spell that you see here unless you have fun ways of casting every spell for instance cast a copy of every spell in your wand let's do it well then now you notice that's 120 and that's 300 so it's pretty expensive to do that but if you want to cast every single modifier and don't worry about the position of it this is your thing right here you can do a lot of fun things with this where um, this can be Put in front of a specific spell when you only want that specific spell to have all the modifiers that are in here like this and this i don't have any other modifiers right now but you can you can use this to kind of selectively pull all your modifiers and add it to one thing it can be useful in wand building later on with the higher advanced wands just so that you can make sure that only certain spells or certain groups of spells are going to have all of this this is a, a, a cool spell to actually play around with. There's a lot more that you can do with it. So I'm just literally scratching the surface with this. Let's take that out. And now let's get to the confusing spell. Copies a random spell and another wand you're holding. Wh wh when? Wh why? Why would you ever copy a random spell? All your wands have tons of spells in them. That's so RNG. That's practically useless. Why? Why in the world would I do that? Well... Let's do this. There are two very specific situations. Well, two that I can think of. There's, there's hundreds of others probably, but two very specific situations I can think of where this is useful. One is when you're in a safe place and you only require two wands to do what you're doing, such as a wand farm. Or if you're going against a boss where you can afford to just use one spell as a carrier. I mean, one wand as a carrier to carry that extra spell that you want to add in. You can also... Um, do this for, you know, like I said, for boss fights where you don't need it. You can also do this when you all you really need is two wands. Like you're, you're running around right now. You're in the, you know, in the middle of the game and you've got two crappy wands that you really don't think you're ever going to use. You chuck them out and you have one good wand that you want to do something with. Then you have this other kind of spare wand that's hanging around. But why? Why would we even use this? Why don't we just take the spell that's on that wand and put it in? Look at the price of this. Copies of random spell and another wand you're holding. Mana drain of 10. Okay. Mana drain of 10. What's the mana drain on some of these other ones? Where, 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 where? Ah, here we go. 240 giga black hole. Hmm. Do I want them? <laughs> 200 for nuke. Uh, 80. So you can see this can save you a considerable amount if you have something specific in mind that you want to cast. And in this case, you could even use this with, you know, casting it multiple times, like having a times two to cast this multiple times. Or you can have it set up so that this casts over and over again when you uh, have a spell that wraps, uh, sorry, a wand that wraps. This can actually be pretty valuable when you want to try to, uh, or divide by spells would work with this too. When you want to cast something a ton of times, but you can't afford the mana, you can stick it on a wand, and you can use Zeta to make a copy of that spell for 10 mana. 
a lot of um what do they call them like uh, corner situations pocket situations or whatever they're 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 oddball cases that you can use this but they're good oddball cases there are other times where you could have a, a whole wand with a whole bunch of different spells in it but any one of those spells would work where your zeta is that's another way that you can do it or if you have um let me show you just an example Why are we even going to use this? This is like that, you know, that math class that you're taking. Okay, so let's say that you have this wand. This is your boss killing wand. You're going to go kill a boss and you want to use a nuke to do it. Smart, right? Using nukes to kill a boss? Well, maybe. We'll see. So what you want to do is you want to fire the nuke, but you also want to have, at the same time you fire that nuke, you want to have a circle of vigor near you. Why would you want that? Well, because nukes are dangerous. So Circle of Vigor will at least put a bit of a heal on you, but you also want to have the ability, while you're maneuvering around, to drop down and cast this by itself, right? You want to still have these two charges available to you. So you want the Circle of Vigor every time you cast the nuke, but you also want the ability to switch to this wand and cast it by itself without the nuke. So let's try it out. See how it saved me there? Just long enough, right? Just long enough. So that's when it can be useful. Look at all this stuff I just dropped. Oh my goodness, I'm dying, I'm dying over here. All right. Those are the basics of the Greek spells. Now, when you're using Greek spells in combination with other Greek spells, or you're using Greek spells in combination with divide by spells or multiply by spells, there's a lot of combinations. And those things you can get into more specifically when you go and you watch videos that are about specific uses for it. The divide by spells, which I'm going to do a video for, those are a lot more complicated. The, the Greek spells can be complicated with others, but on their own, they're pretty easy to understand. Like I said, the only one that kind of throws people is Zeta, but you can see how Zeta works. It's cheap, and it can also be used in specific circumstances where you just need it to do what it does. And you don't care about the price, but you get the idea. You get the idea. You can you can now cast ridiculous combinations because this is 90 mana drain. And uh, to add that in with a whole nother uh, 240 plus this is just going to be too much. So Zeta can save you some big bucks on some really expensive spells. That's pretty much it. If you have any questions, please go ahead, put them in the comments. If this has been at all helpful to you, or even if it hasn't, if you just want to have pity on me, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the alert button and come on back. Next time we're gonna be, be doing, we're gonna Bedouin. We're gonna Bedouin the divide by spells. Appreciate y'all much love. Twitch.tv forward slash calm little buddy. If you want to come see me weeknights, 10:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Actually, not just weeknights, but almost every night. I'm out. Thank you so much for hanging out. See you next video.